Is that is that Ricky Bobby? Oh my God! From Point Park at Twitch TV. What's he doing there? What's he doing there? Fun fact: Ricky is now a part of the esports team. He is going to be playing for our guys, and this is his first ever game. No. Yeah. Incredible! Incredible. Speaking of, I'm Gail. I'm Rhett. And welcome back to the League of Legends. We haven't played since last year. This is our first game of the NACE season. I'm pretty excited. How about you? Oh, I'm absolutely thrilled to see what's going to happen. I'm just, I'm so excited to be casting League of Legends again. I, I was so excited to get back here, get back in this room. And <sighs> yeah, I'm excited too. First time doing all this and I'm very excited. Very happy to get this experience. Happy to see many, many more uh, through the year. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be casting with you. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to be having a lot of new casters coming in, so that's going to be really, really exciting. Um, and I'm really excited to see Ricky play today. I am so happy for him. This has been his dream for all four years he's been here. He's always wanted to be a part of the team, and now he actually gets the chance to. Dream come true. I'm very happy for him. Very happy for him. Excited to see what he's going to bring to the table. Speaking of table, oh, yeah, nobody like... likes our table, but you know what? That's okay. <laughs> what we do like, not like is Red Bull. Oh, absolutely. Love Red Bull. Remember, Love it. We're sponsored by Red Bull. <laughs> All right. I'm very excited to get into this game. What, do you, what are you expecting from this game? Oh, I'm expecting a few things. Counterfix for sure. Seeing who our side can get before uh, our opponents. MSU. Uh, maybe a little bit of Maokai, a little bit of Cassante. Although I'm excited for my own little mischief picks. Always excited to have you see Yordles, Gangplank, any kind of weird pick. I'm hoping we see a Rakan, but that's just me. I don't know if we will. I think we're more likely to see someone like Rel over Rakan, but it would be nice to see. It would be nice to see my little guy. My little guy going out there. Zyra also a pretty valuable pick as well, just to see out in the bot lane as a support or even just as a general wall of defense mm -hmm. uh, with her plants and things. Well, she's gotten really good now that she can place two plants at once. Really? I didn't know well, that. Well, it's not really two plants at once. It's more, um, I, I worded that bad. They, like buffed her, they buffed her W, so now she's able to, at level one, she can place two seeds instead of just one seed. That's insane. That's insane. It's it's so yeah. good. I got M7 literally just this season just because they added that. I'm I'm crediting it all to the fact that I can place two seeds at once, and now I can make two plants that shoot seeds at other people. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's great for lane pressure. Mm. Though as for other picks, um, Zaya also got buffed this season. She's really good. It's very possible we might be seeing her somewhere in the bot lane, maybe. Um... If I remember correctly, both of our teams that are going to be playing today, both Point Park and MSU, play her. Oh, okay. A little so, back and forth uh, just, character pick in there. Just gotta see who gets her first. Let's hope we. Let's hope our. Uh, let's hope Point Park. Let's hope Point Park does. Sorry. Yeah, let's just hope we get first pick because mm -hmm. we won't know that yet. Oh, suspense is killing me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see the game. I have been so hyped for this for a few days. I've been talking about it. Um, I'm just, I'm real excited. Very hype, very, very I'm, hype. I'm hyper, I'm hyper. <laughs> um, so. I'm hoping to see some alternatives if uh, we can't get Cassante or Zaya. Mm -hmm. Maybe some other higher value ends. Maybe some... Again, more mischief leading. I heard um, might not be this patch, but the next one, Zig is getting a buff for really? first Q. Yeah, the his radius for his bouncing bomb is going to be increased. Oh, that's toxic. That's it's hilarious. Oh my, oh, that my is goodness. so toxic. <laughs> I, I hate playing against Ziggs as it is, let alone now the fact that his Q can reach farther. I love playing Ziggs. It's so oh, much fun. It's so hard playing against him, especially when I'm playing when I'm playing a not poke support. Like if I'm if I'm playing Morgana, I don't care. I'm fine. Whatever. It's okay. But if I'm going in, if I'm playing Rel, if I'm playing Rakan, if I'm playing even Thresh, who I've started playing, like that's that's not a fun matchup. That's not something I'm going to enjoy. In the bot lane, I think if you can focus the Ziggs, lock him down. He's pretty easy pickings. Doesn't have crazy tools out. 
Well, I think the interesting thing about Ziggs is you can also play him in the mid lane. I've played against a mid Ziggs before while I was trying to figure out how the mid lane worked. Oh, I've done mid, mid Ziggs all the time. It's, it's my favorite so activity. Hard. It's not. It's not the hardest mid lane matchup I've been up oh, against. No. For me, that's like Fizz or like mm -hmm. someone or just a like very odd pick. I've seen like a lot of top laners show up in mid lane. I thought oh, I'm Shen. one of those people. Oh no. I'm a, I don't like top lane. Top lane's very hard. You're very isolated, and it's a very brawler lane. I love a lot of top lane champions. I love Kale. I love Gwen. Even, well, I do the same thing with junglers, too. I'll play junglers in the mid lane, because I hate playing jungle, because I'm not good at it. I have experimented with junglers in the in the other lanes. Udyr top has been one that's been a relatively successful choice. It hasn't worked out for me just yet, though. Although with mid lane, I've seen some strange ones mid. I've seen, like, a Shen mid very recently. I've played Kane mid. <sighs> Oh my god. I Four I five. only was ever able to make it work when I was in a voice call with my jungler. Mm. Who was playing Rengar. Oh my god. That sounds <laughs> filthy. Oh, oh my we goodness. were bullying this poor Akali. An Akali? Oh, it was an Akali. We were bullying her, and I felt a little bit bad about it. Oh no, it was Akali. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I was playing King mid. <laughs> Lilia mid, because I didn't want to play Lilia top. Well, that was a thing. That's a thing? Oh, it was for like a moment. Mm. I think it was sometime last year. Lilia top was a thing. Oh. It was. It's a kind of. It was kind of like a very frowned upon thing. Kind of like how a vein top is like. Ah, that's disgusting. We don't like vein top. No range champion. It was kind of like. Lane. It was kind of like that, but it was Lilia. It's like she doesn't have range, but she's just so fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think. I think Lilia would be interesting to see at some point in the in the game, whether whether that's an MSU pick or a Point Park pick, or even in a f future game, if someone else picks Lilia, because I'm not sure if we play her. I don't think we do. Like, I would love to see another team come in and play Lilia, which is saying a lot, because I hate playing against a Lilia, just how fast she is. Yeah, no, anything with speed is a hassle. Biggest menace to that is Nunu and Willem. Oh my oh goodness. My <laughs> Ended up in a, you know, in a team against one. Uh, doing like vertical uh, ganking or jungling, basically going up and down rather than side to side. Mm -hmm. Actual speed demon. He was insane by 15 minutes. That just brings back memories of last year. I need to see a new new pick again. Oh, no. I don't. I, I don't care if it's this game. I don't care if it's another game. I need to see a new new pick. I need. I need that toxic moment of them all running top lane again. I've heard the rumors. I've heard the rumors. The rumors. The new new rumors. Oh no. <laughs> Still though, I, I think I think uh, off meta pick can be a very good advantage when it comes to the wild card factor, the fear factor, some of the stranger ones. Well, they've, they've done that in worlds too. Um, Adam picked Garen, and he was he's Adam's I always saw... known for um doing all like the weird plays and everything, like doing like uh off meta picks, and he picked Garen, and he stomped the other team. It was incredible. I, I saw just that video playing this Garen. I also seen it this morning. Uh, but for me, I think uh, the, a funny. Uh, well, what was the what was the word? This gave me funny off meta mischief. That's the word. That's what off it meta was. mischief. We're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna trademark mm -hmm. that. We're gonna trademark <laughs> off meta mischief. <laughs> I know, I'm always one. I'm always here for to see feast or famine. Very entertaining, especially if they famine first and then run it back to to feast. Gangplank's a big one. Big one with that. Um, who else? What other champions are like this? I would say, I'd say Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks, too, yeah. He can be <laughs> troublesome to play if you're falling behind. Mm -hmm. But when he's ahead, it's really, really good. He's an absolute nightmare. He's exactly like a cinematic. Just horrifying to realize he might be in any corner, anywhere. I've gotten jump scared by many a Fiddlesticks. And a many a Fiddlesticks effigies. It's very embarrassing to waste your flash on oh, for me, because... for me, it's attack on sight. Doesn't matter decoy or not, it's gonna go down. Well, I pl I play squishy people. I play squishy champions, and even when I'm playing a tankier champion like Rakan, I'm gonna bring him up again because he's my main. I don't play him properly. I build one tank item, and everything else is AP, so I can do damage, but I have no health bar. But I do good. Not really good. I'm Louie though, but that's why I'm up here <laughs> and not out there with Ricky. I'll join Ricky. Ricky, put me in the ring. You're going to go in the, in the ring? ring? You're going to go in the ring? Let me go in. Let me go in. It'll be funny. <laughs> what lane are you going to go? <laughs> oh, Gangplank Top. I have easily first choice of Gangplank myself top. and then maybe like Silas mid. You got, you got to go Gangplank ADC. Gangplank 
anything like it is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Any and all, all ability haste, all the time. Essence Reaver, Moby Boots, right? No, Ionian Boots, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the Navori Quick Blades, which changed recently. I always thought they were... Did they? I, for some reason, at least a bit, I might be misremembering, but they used to be legendary, now they're mythics. Oh, yes, I do remember that change, and that really benefited Zaya a while back, and then they nerfed her for it because... It's like, wow, this champion's really strong. We got to nerf her. But now that she's buffed again and she's really good again, which is fantastic. I love playing Zaya. I am not an ADC player by any means whatsoever. But I love Zaya. Hey, you see, I'm a, I'm a bit of a gin enthusiast. I like counting to the number four. It's my favorite number. <laughs> favorite activity is counting to four and missing all of my Ws. Uh, <laughs> I can't count the four when I'm playing gin. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm I'm forgetting that I'm counting. It's like, what shot am I on? I have no. Oh, I'm walking fast. I must be on fourth shot. That's why the highest kill count, uh, kill streak, gins can get is a uh, quadra Four. kill. I I got one of those in an ARAM, and I was so <laughs> proud of myself. We we call that a jinta kill. Oh it's a gin God. penta. <laughs> Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's gins version of a penta. If he gets another five, then it's wrong. Artistically incorrect. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, because we like number four. Yep. Because I can only count to four. Speaking of four, we have what, maybe like four minutes before we get to get in the game oh, and I'm see who's so going to be in there? I'm excited. Cannot ah. wait. Cannot wait. Excited to see both teams get down and dirty with laning, fighting, Drake's, everything. I just want to see some action. <laughs> I. Pick and ban phase is probably one of my favorite phases of the game, too. Mm -hmm. I, I like seeing who other people pick and who they ban, because I'm very patternistic. I will always ban Tristana. So it's, it's all psychological warfare. Always send a message. Don't yeah. ban your counter. Ban Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Ban I have... your friends' characters. <laughs> I dodged a game because of that once. <laughs> When I was learning <laughs> League of Legends, I was a Yumi player. And if you know anything about Yumi players, they're the worst the mm -hmm. worst ever. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, Yumi was the reason I got in the League of Legends. I was like, I want to play the silly little cat that everybody seems to hate. Why do they hate the silly little cat? And I was playing with a random ADC because we didn't have enough people. And he banned Yumi. <laughs> and because I was going to lock in Yumi. He was like, don't play Yumi. I was like, I'm playing Yumi. And he banned her. And so I dodged. My goodness. And we had the Yumi dodge timer. <laughs> Everyone was so mad at me. I'm like, no, I, I wanted to play Yumi. I mean, fair enough. She's got quite a lot of utility for what she's worth. What she's, and this was, and this was before worth. they changed her, too, when she was, like, uber broken. Was she uber broken? I don't know if it's uber broken, but, like, it, was, it's, it wasn't really fun whenever you got, like, a really fed top laner, and then all of a sudden Yumi's running around the map with said fed top laner, mm. just healing them and making sure they don't die. Mm. I loved doing that, though. It makes me so sad. I kind of miss it. I don't know how to play new Yumi. From what I understand, you kind of get someone and you read a book. Yeah. Make coffee, ramen, check Twitter. Make sure you throw out an ability every so often so you don't get an AFK flag. Absolutely, absolutely. Watch a little bit of TikTok. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can see us on TikTok now, by the way, Point Park um, underscore esports. We're on TikTok now. We also now have a Facebook page and we're always on Instagram. <laughs> Now, but the guy that got me in the league, the, the character that really kind of grabbed me, Twisted Fate. For some really? for some reason, being able to pop out of the bushes and just gold card someone was a very <laughs> intoxicating experience. It was a mixture of him and Wukong, I want to say. Mine, mine was solely Yumi. I only got into the game because of Yumi. Because I had a friend who was sending me League of Legends memes because he had joined our high school esports team. And I was like, explain this to me. For no reason whatsoever. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so we have the supports up here. Because it's like the support, 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 and bard. Like different mm -hmm. kinds of supports. I was like, who's this silly little, who's this silly little kitty cat? I want to see who the silly little kitty cat was. And he was like... Oh, that's Yumi. Everyone hates her. She's like the devil in disguise. I'm like, bet I'm playing Yumi now. That's Yumi, a leech in the shape of a cat. <laughs> At least that's what my friends say. Parasite. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, forget Kogma. Forget Kha'Zix. Yumi's the real boy. I love, born. I love, <laughs> I love playing Yumi in Aram because I will, I will just be like, deliver me to battle. Oh my god. Especially like if I'm in a voice call with the people, I'll just be like, deliver me. 
<laughs> I need a taxi. I'll play Battle Cat, you mean, so I'm just stealing everybody's kills. Like, deliver me. <laughs> For me, oh, who's my favorite ARAM activity? There's, there's a few of them. Renekton, he's a fun really? one. Absolute. I like a lot of characters that can get down and dirty. Uh, and ones that I can turn off my brain for. Renekton is one of those. Really? I would have thought Renekton, like, you need, like, a lot of brain power for. Uh, more so bodies in front of you. That's what my friends helped me with mm. in ARAM. They would help me lock down. I would just kind of go in, hit R, gore drinker, and eventually profit. I've gotten a, at least one pentakill off him. I only have one champion that I've ever gotten a pentakill on. Mm. That's Lux. Oh, classic. I remember getting that. I I was actually in a game with our mid laner highway and some of our other friends. We were just messing around. I was learning Lux because I was like, well, I wasn't like, everybody was yelling at me to learn a new champion. I was like, fine, I'm learning the other one everybody hates because <laughs> I'm petty. And I got a quadra and they were like, you need to go, you need to go, you need to go get the last. I'm like, I'm, I'm panicking. I'm literally shaking. I almost didn't get it, but I threw an E down just in time because my E came up and I got the kill. There you go. There you go. For me, uh, who's the last? The last person I saw a lot of progress on in the was in Italy. Although I, whom, I still can't fathom why she is AP and not AD. Because uh, last I checked, spears aren't magic. I mean, I guess you can say the same thing about Garen. A lot of his things do magic damage despite the fact that Demacia hates magic I mean his ult is literally a magical sword that comes from the sky mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like isn't he supposed to be like I hate magic it's like a hot pocket they just won't know what, what happened until you put it. it's wrapped in a martial weapon I think if I were Jarvan IV or whomever the greater Demacian court would be they're like no that's a sword. It's not magic. It's not a fireball. It's not lightning. It's a sword. Swords fall. It's gravity. It's gravity. Absolutely. Holy natural. <laughs> Just like kale. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it's perfectly fine that she has a bunch of swords falling down from the sky. It's not gravity. a big deal. Gravity. Just, how did the swords get that they, they, we threw them? Dagger. Uh, Reigns of daggers are very common in Demacia. 45% chance, partly cloudy daggers <laughs> it's just when kale gets upset it just starts raining daggers and then that's how garen got his ult his ult is just kale being upset yeah, it's like it's like when hail packs up really high to be like a, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. a like a tennis ball Except it just one chunk down into demacia like <laughs> that, that's why that's why they hate the magic they hate the magic because they want to stop the blade rain mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a hot po i can't get, you call it a hot pocket <laughs> Hot pocket can Are only all the uh, just hot calzone. Pocket? A pizza I mean, roll. Realistically, I couldn't tell you. I could. There's a food for it. I'm sure. I'm certain. Are, are we, are Silas's just... alt is a Las Vegas buffet. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We're in the pick in the band phase. All right. We're finally. in the pick in the band. Days, let's go psychological warfare let's go it looks like so far point park has banned lulu and msu has banned samira good choice on msu's part samira is very deadly once she gets the ball rolling once mm -hmm. all momentum is given to her it is a complete wipe with oh wait no i got that i got that mixed up uh you want me to wait while you go get uh Um, I got that mixed up. Um, MSU is in the blue right now, and they just picked Gwen. And it looks like we're gonna try and pick that Cassante. We just picked Cassante. I think that's, I think that's a pretty good thing to do. Still good to see we're getting all of these picks that we were talking about very that, earlier that before that. Zach. Zach. That's unexpected. I was not expecting to see Zach. I've met like, a good Zach. Very dangerous. Very dangerous guy. It looks like MSU got J4 and Annie, and we're going to be taking the Oriana pick. Oriana's and now we're nasty. back into the ban phase. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let's see. Get my seat. It looks like we have all of our supports in our bot lanes are both open. We're going to get rid of Ari. Mm hmm. Which is interesting, actually. Unless they were thinking about maybe like an Ari support. They're going to take away our Rakan. No. All right. But yes, again, the color is flipped right now. So we're just going to ignore that. It looks like. We press on. 
Yeah, we, we go on. It looks like we're going to actually ban Rel instead of try and pick her, and they're going to take away Amumu. I don't think anyone anything was lost there. Yeah. Uh are we, we're gonna get Zaya? We're gonna get. Whoa. We got the Zaya pick, just like I was talking about earlier. Any mischievous picks? Hmm? Anything? Anything? Let's see. Anything Let's funny? See. Let's see. I'm curious. Kaisa. Kaisa, very consistent, very strong. Kaisa's Kaisa. been very strong recently. I've seen also. what her kit can do, and it is it's frightening. Scary. But also, Kaisa's another champion where if you don't do well early, you d you kind of you yeah. can get there. You can be good, but you're not gonna be as good as you can be. But the Alistar, Alistar pick, Kaisa Alistar. and Alistar, is fantastic. <laughs> and it looks like Point Park is going to be taking Nautilus. Good choice, in my opinion. Nautilus is a very strong support. I've run many games with a Nott. Really good guy, really strong player. Nott is scary. He is a frightening opponent. Well, his Q range is a lot longer than you think it was. And it works well for Zaya because Zaya does really well when a champion is up close and personal to her. Especially so she can get the feathers out there and then pull them back. Because mm -hmm. if they're on the other side of her feathers, there's not really much she can do. But if the Nautilus pulls them in towards her and roots them in place while she gets enough feathers behind them to again root them, it gets them stuck in a stunlock, which would also be fantastic for ganks because Zack would come down mm -hmm. and blob onto the enemy. And that would be great for us. Slime and feathers, cats and dogs, mass However, hysteria. However, on the contrary, if Nautilus brings in, let's say, an Alistar, Alistar can just knock Nautilus away. Mm -hmm. Strong push power with uh, Alistar. Very admirable support choice, tr truly. Mm -hmm. As for the J4 and the Zac, those are two champions I was actually not expecting to see. J4 I don't see too much of. The ones I've experienced with, they tend to be top lane or jungle, somewhere fur much further away from where I end up playing, typically mid or even jungle as well. But they're always just off in like a lane instead of a posing jungler, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think of how this would work because we a lot of our champions aren't super mobile. I mean, Nautilus is mobile, but not mobile when it comes to being in a um, J4 ult. I also hate I hate Jarvan four. I have mm. I have a vendetta against Jarvan the fourth. Mm. Mm. I hate him. I hate playing against Jarvan the fourth. Fantastic champion. Can't wait to see where this goes. Cool guy. Love him at parties. Great. But that's also why I hate playing against Jarvin the Fourth because I always ha seem to have really bad luck when it comes to not being in his way. He seems to really like me being dead. <laughs> and on my experience with Jarvin Four, very little. But uh, from what there is, best I think. I think the best ideal right here, at least in this game right now, is to. Wait for him to approach and lock him down. Absolutely shut him down. Or we cut can, him off to pass. Or if we can hope that Jarvan traps his entire team in his ult, that could work. However, at the same time, Zack can get into the Jarvan 4 ult with them all because he has the bounce. And then Zaya has the invulnerability where she goes up in the air. She can probably just move over it. And J4 ult is a little hard to work with nowadays, especially with the fact that you can just flash over it or dash over it. And so many champions have dashes. I mean, Cassante has a dash too, which is insane. Insane that a bruiser champion has that many dashes. Yeah, no, more the merrier, more the merrier. And Gwen, I'm... How did Gwen you... is immune. Yes, that's true. Gwen <laughs> is very immune. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think about how that top lane matchup is going to go out. Because I feel like, like Gwen is a fantastic champion, but I've... Never seen her into a Cassante. Like, who do you think would do better in that scenario? I mean, I, I'm trusting your judgment. I feel like you probably know a bit more about top lane than I do. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, my experience with top lane is a gangplank and gangplank alone. But I've ran Fair into enough. both, I believe. Gwen is certainly nastier in terms of sustain. I'm not too familiar with the gameplay loop Cassante has. I know he... Uh, what was it? Re you know, drops defense from her attack and then vice versa. It's almost mm -hmm. like a command he can do, which very strong. I like the concept. I just haven't ever gotten around to playing him or facing him enough times. Many, many of my friends have, although they tend to play like jungle or um, my one friend has like a friend's Orn a lot, and he's just a brick oh, I wall. I love Orn. Love Orn to death. He's oh, great. I would love to see Orn in a game. Mm -hmm. You Love to see Orn, Ivern, Jin, all the funny, all the we, funny. We got We got We like. We gotta like go up to when they're doing like drafting, and we gotta like subliminally tell them, "You need to play Jin." 
you need to play or you know we need to like funny? Oh, what? if you picked orn wouldn't that be <laughs> yeah, funny that would be free so upgrades, funny free upgrades. Be... free upgrades play ivern funny friends animals you can have so many bugs you can learn the vocabulary of every proper name of every creature in the rift like lord grompulus <laughs> Does he actually call him Lord Grompulus? There's Gromulus? a much longer name that I cannot remember, but he's like something something Lord Grompulus the Fourth. Just like Jarvin! The lineage is strong. Oh, I hate Jarvin the Fourth. <laughs> I hate Jarvin the Fourth. Shivana could do better. Absolutely, absolutely. This is a lore reference. Do you think they're married for money? Are they married? Are they? I don't know. I thought they were just kinda into each other. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I feel like Shivana wouldn't do it for the money. Jarvin. I don't have high opinions of Jarvin. He probably would. He actually, I don't want to say that. He probably wouldn't. Jarvin's probably a great guy. And here we are. We're here. Let's go. All right. First game of the nay season. Let's go. We're in. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So far, checking around for invades. All the common placements and positions. And just as a reminder, right now, the graphics are a little flipped around, so Point Park's actually going to be on our right, and MSU is going to be on our left. So just pretend that those are flipped around for me. Mm -hmm. Already in. There we go! We flipped it around! Excellent! Looks like up here in the mid lane, we're going to be starting off pretty nice. Looks like MSU is waiting for us. For Point Park in the bush. Top lanes. Top lanes Go. doing trades. Right each other's toes. Ooh. Glenn's going in with this. Ooh, it looks like Ooh. Nautilus is. Nautilus going in. Nautilus hit a hook on the Kaisa. Zyre got a lot of damage off on her, but it wasn't enough to really do anything substantial. I think the biggest thing we're looking for is people getting too greedy to go in. Early game is a nasty pit hole. We pit got hole. a. Not going in, tangling toe to toe with the Alistar. Nautilus hit the hook, but Alistar knocked Zaya away, doing exact, preventing exactly what I talked about with Zaya getting enough feathers behind the enemy to kind of stun them. She was just out of that fight completely. Gasante and Gwen get, getting into it a little bit, doing some damage, but Gwen still playing pretty, pretty safe. Gwen's getting pretty dangerous, running around with those safety scissors with no adult supervision. <laughs> Who's going to tell Viego? Oh, no one. No one will. Uh, oh. I mean, Viego probably doesn't even know that she's technically his daughter yet. Does, does he know that? Like, in a way. She is? In, like, a really weird way because she has, like, he sold... Oh. oh, here we go. Sorry, a lot of things are happening in the game right now. Alistar is very low health. Zaya and Nautilus are both half health. And Kaisa still has most of her health bar right now. Looks like... I, I think one good Jarvan hook. Jarvan 4 is coming in, maybe possibly to gank. Mm-hmm. Zach's right around the corner also. Yep, that looks like MSU is going to be ganking down bot lane, which is really good. It's Point Park's going to be counter ganking. Alistar knocks the Nautilus back over, but Nautilus hooks Alistar ooh, back into it. Ooh, and Alistar first blood Zach. goes to Point Park. Kakid on the Zach. Incredible, incredible. It looks like we're still going to be chasing a little bit. Kaisa's is doing some damage to Zach. Zai is doing some damage to Kaisa. Everyone is really low right now. Kakid fought. Jarvan gets a double kill. I'm going to be kind of honest. I couldn't really tell what happened. Yeah, no, a lot of back and forth, a lot of sudden movements. Jarvan, I think, definitely came at came at the right place, right time. Oh, absolutely. That was a fantastic play on Jarvan's part right there. Good play on his part. He got the, the double the kill, and he, then he got Kaisa the kill on the Zac. That was great. MSU's jungler now has two kills and 150 gold bounty. Already becoming a nasty, nasty power in the rift. Gwen CC looking very nice, that little scissor move she does. Yeah, but they're still pretty neck and neck. It looks like everybody right now is neck and neck within their CC. Mm -hmm. um, Nautilus and Alistar going going at it in the river. <laughs> and Point Park's going to double team on that Scuttle Crowd. It looks like we have tw about 20 seconds until the first dragon spawns. Um, both supports are setting up vision around there. Here. Pretty calm on the mid lane, I must say. Not much activity going on. Just trading some small time. Which is probably for the best. 
I think mm -hmm. both Oriana and Annie are very alt oriented. Oriana doesn't really do much until she gets her ult. Annie doesn't really do much until she gets her ult. I mean, that's not true. They both do a lot of damage, but it's better oh, off with the ult. And it looks like Point Park's gonna start on the Ocean Drake. Right now, MSU can rotate up, try and take it, but it looks like they're just gonna give it to Point Park, which is fantastic. If we get the Ocean Drake, that's really good for both Nautilus and Zac, as well as Cassante. Well, not the end of the world for MSU. Ocean Drake's a pretty light loss, realistically, especially first Drake. You can yeah. let those sorts of things go. It's when it gets to the last set of Drakes becomes a real, real problem. Yeah, but it will still be nice to have. They'll have the sustain. It looks like Jarvan's going to be coming up to try and gank the Cassante. He drops the flag, jumps in. Gwen goes invulnerable, but he does manage to escape. Cassante lives to see another day. Alistar Ooh. flashing out of the bush, but Donald is catching him with the hook right before he can even touch Zaya. Going fishing. Caught something there. <laughs> that, doesn't look like a, that doesn't look like a fish. It's a really funny shaped fish. Absolutely. Strange waters here in Bilgewater. <laughs> Where's Alistar from? Search me. I uh, genuinely... Well, hold on. Maybe the same place that Wukong is from? Ionia? No, Wukong's not from Ionia. It's like from some kind of... It escapes me, but it's a lot of like. It looks like animal, MSU's though. mid laner is going to be coming down to try and gank. This is good for us because now Highway can either push in the lane down mid or maybe go rotate down, get a kill on Annie, maybe go up top. But it looks like he's going to be pushing that wave, which is a pretty good move. Be this careful might about that be a little now. bad on MSU's part. Because now Annie not only missed out on the wave, there's a big, there's going to be a wave crashing at the tower, and she didn't really get much from that little bit of a gank. She kind of just came in, looked at them a little bit funny, and then walked away. Mm -hmm. Although no, never a bad, never a bad situation. Sometimes a gank just doesn't work out quite right. It's better Which to is, leave with your life. That is very, very true. It would have been so much worse if Point Park had gotten that kill. But everything's kind of going pretty even right now. Gold, we're on, gold is mostly even. There's only a 2k gold difference right now. Mm. A calm before the storm. Oh, Jarvan, Ooh, Jarvan going, in. going in. For the gank with the ult. Looks like Zaya got the root off, but Kaisa goes in for the kill Ooh. and gets a double kill getting that Nautilus. That Jarvan is so good at pulling off ganks. That is twice now he has ganked and gotten some, and gotten both kills out of it. And, and now MSU is flash. going to be taking our tower from that. Ooh, Annie getting the stun off. Good trade, good trade. It looks like Zach went down to try and stop MSU from getting Point Park's tower. Looks like fairly successful. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jarvis put a lot, of, a lot of focus on that bot lane, which as, as he showed, but I'm wondering if he's going to swing by top lane to, to lend some assistance in dispatching I, Cassante. See, I feel like that might be a little unlikely. I feel like a lot of people leave top lane to their to its own accord just to let it be like a little island until late game. But Jarvan Ford looking for the gank on the Orianna. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does not look like Orianna is going to let that happen, though, because he just walks away. Orianna does have a few tools as well to counteract that sort of thing. Any kind of trap her uh, her orb that she can leave on the ground, that kind of thing. Alistar and Nautilus are getting into it in the river right now, probably battling for the vision. And now both junglers are back in their jungle, just looking for camps. Both supports are back in their lane to help out their ADCs. Jarvan Four casually assaulting Lord Gromp. I thought it was Lord Grompulus the Fourth. <sighs> My bad, my bad. It, it, he, there can only be one. There can only be one the fourth. True. Only one lineage can survive in Demacia. <laughs> I'm sure the Gromp would not survive in Demacia to begin with. I feel like he's probably too magical for their liking. Oh, no. No, certainly not. Looks, it looks like the Gwen's pushing up on the Cassante. Right now, both junglers can probably go in for a... For some sort of gank, it looks like that's what Jarvan Four is preparing on that, or he's invading Zach. What's Alistar doing? He's going on an adventure. My goodness. Looks like both Kaisa and Alistar are going on an adventure. Point Park can take this opportunity to either rotate up, try and get vision on the dragon, or push in that lane, get more CS, get ahead with the gold, get more items. 
Both are very likely, though if they do, they have to be careful that that Kaisa and Alistar don't come back down while they're too far extended. Sorry, not it also spelled bad news for whoever is caught in that crossfire. It looks like Jarvan 4 is going to be starting on Rift Herald, but Drag is coming up in 7 seconds. We can start rotating up for that, trade Rift Herald for the second Drag. Because we can, if Point Park can stack those dragons, that we might not be ahead in kills, but it'll give us a, a little bit ahead in power, possibly. Absolutely. I, many games I've been a part of have ended in a loss, despite the kill difference, mm -hmm. given that the opposing team is just much more organized at cleaning up the objectives in particular. Mm -hmm. Or just Ooh. organized in general. It looks like Asante and Gwen are going, getting into it. Gwen taking a few Asante power doing shots. a lot of damage. It does look like Gwen gets a kill on the Kasante, but right now a team fight's going on. Nautilus ha hits a hook on the Annie. Zach Annie pulls down. Annie back. Highway gets the kill on Annie, but J4 goes in and returns the favor, avenges his fallen enemies. Not Looks down, like Kaisa gets Kaisa. another kill. Zach is doing his best to do a cleanup. Zaya's running for her life. Can he get all the goop in time? Yes, he could. It looks like Alistar kind of just saved Zaya's life right there. Absolutely. That's what Alistars are for. The greatest supports. <laughs> for the enemy team, apparently. <laughs> and they hit their own team. He's doing a fantastic job supporting this Kaisa right now, but it does look like Point Park is going to lose this dragon to MSU. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, Mountain Dragon, we, have, we now have our two Drakes pretty much locked down, Mountain and Infernal. Wondering what's going to be the major Drake that would be the soul it looks for this like, rift. It looks like it's going to be Cloud Drake. Clouds. All the movement speed is my favorite. That's going to be really rough with when it comes to catching Gwen and catching Kaisa and even catching Kasante and catching Zaya for that matter. Zaya not great with the movement speed. With, with her ult, if she can get out, she can absolutely escape. And Nautilus with the Q escape. I can only imagine going. how much more of a monster Jarvan 4 can turn into with his movement speed at his back. That's very true. He is all over the map right now. MSU is far ahead in CS now, having 23k compared to Point Park 17. I'm still confident we could probably close in the gap. Just need a few select picks and a few select bounties, especially with Kaisa with that 550 gold bounty. That's a juicy juicy prize if we can if point park can get that kill if it goes to zaya if it goes to oriana if it goes to zach that'll be fantastic on our part they can get further in getting their next item mm -hmm. and then we'll be stronger i think our best bet would be getting it to zaya i think it would be great if we can get zaya maybe a navori's or maybe even a gale force so she can have that bit more of escape especially when it comes to jarvan four's alt mm -hmm. Oriana, if she can if she can get that bounty get handed get handed on, on those Ludens, then the burst damage would be absolutely insane. Shelly being dropped. It looks like that's going to take that tower, or at least most of it. They got the it's two plates on, early. It's, that tower is on its last leg. It looks like Point Park was gonna try and chase MSU, but they took the blast cone over the wall. There's not much Point Park can do about that. Right All they safe. can do right now is try and defend that tower and make sure they don't come up and tick a little, little bit. Because mm -hmm. that's all it's going to take to knock down that tower. Gwen is really pushed up on that Cassante. Luckily, that turret plane is going to be falling pretty soon, which means they won't have to worry about gold bounties being draw lost over to MSU anymore. However, that does mean that we won't get the gold bounties off on the turrets also. Very true, very true. We'll have to rely on objective bounties, which are same value, but much less frequent. And we will be getting, and Point Park will be getting the objective bounties once that happens, just given the fact that the score right now is 9-2 to two in MSU's favor. Jarvan 4 ults onto the Nautilus under the tower. The not and holding takes his own. The tower. Kaisa comes in, ults in, Zaya. Ooh. Ults to be able to escape. Oriana comes down to try and help, but Annie drops Tibbers right on her head. My goodness. Oriana ults to get Annie out of there. Looks like both Oriana and Annie are going to survive, as well as everybody from... Actually, the entirety of MSU that came in there seemed to survive. Zaya was able to get out alive, which is fantastic for Point Park. The less Zaya dies, the better it is for them. 
wondering where the movement's going to be now because it seems like landing phase is just about over. Starting to do having to having to do some rotations, keep those objectives up. Zaya Nautilus now rotating into the mid lane and Oriana taking bot lane. Nautilus can see that Alistar's in that bush, but it looks like Alistar's going to be taking that ward. Zaya gets a bit of damage off on him, but it's not enough. Jarvan clearing the camps. Double clearing? My goodness. I didn't even know that was possible now. Neither could I. Neither could I. I guess anything's possible when you're the king of Demacia. Anything's possible with the privilege of a monarchy. True. It looks like now... Point Park's just going to push out the lanes. I think, I personally think the best thing for them would just to kind of be safe and wait till MSU comes towards them. We cannot be picking any fights. It looks like Ooh, this, Nautilus this hits a, a hook win. on the Alistar. Ooh. Ooh. Point right. Park gets two kills. One going the Zaya and one going the Nautilus. Looks like Nautilus is going to hit a stun on Kaisa. Zach and Zaya doing all of the damage. Zach, and Zach gets the getting bounty. the shutdown. 700. Juicy gold coins. Let's see what that goes into. I'm thinking heart steel, but I'm not terribly sure on what Zack build is meant for. I'm also not sure what a Zack build is meant Especially for. Especially jungle. I've seen like Zack top with like either heart steel. You can hear change that with Jack show. Speaking of items, it looks like highway on Oriana went Lyandries. Oh, there you go. Interesting choice. Interesting that is choice. Something interesting. I am not an Oriana expert. I'm going to start this off with that, but I don't think I've ever seen an Oriana go Leandries. No, Luden seems to be the more common choice given the high burst. Although, with Leandries, that can also work well for any magic champion who tends to do a lot more hits all at once mm -hmm. rather than one large hit. Or if burst. somebody gets away with just a little bit of health, that Leandries is going to put in so much work. That burns it would be very It looks like valuable. MSU is going to be trying to take that Cloud Drake right now. It looks like we might be trading that Drake to take Rift Herald. Cassante is just trying to keep Gwen at bay while we do that. Is it Harold? No, it's not. Is it? No, Shelly won't be gone. MSU takes the Cloud Drake. It is now two to one in terms of Drake, but we do get the second Rift Herald. Point Park does get the second Rift Herald of the game. Very good, very good. Now, our options are we could try and take this down bot lane, try and push that out a bit, put it down mid lane, which would probably be better for us. I feel like the more towers we can get in mid lane, the higher our chances are. Or we could throw a curveball. We could take a top lane. Try and get Ricky to push Gwen up. Yeah, that's true. Drop <laughs> it there. Come around the corner, much like Jarvan 4 did in the bot lane. Gwen is very strong in a one on one scenario, but the more people that are on her tail, the worse, less of a chance she has. The only thing you got to worry about with that Gwen is Gwen can escape pretty well. She can And with the invulnerable. Really fast. It's not even like she can go immune and then dash away, like to dodge like an ability. Cassante mm -hmm. pushes Gwen back, holds her under the tower. Oh, but the trade still seems to be more in Gwen's advantage. She's taking a lot of tower, tower damage, there. though. Cassante's just dancing around her. It's a sweet dance at the top lane. Ooh, a good hook on Nott. But Annie does hit her stun off on Nautilus. Nautilus ults onto the Annie. Damn Zach is jumping Zach. all over her Incredible. and gets the kill. It's like or both Oriana and Cassante now in the top lane. Along with Alistar. Um, Nautilus, Zaya, and Zach doing some damage off on the tower and placing Shelly down. Hopefully we'll take that tower, get a little bit of hits off on it at least, get it really low so that maybe all we have to do is walk up and tickle it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like Alistar rotated back down towards the mid lane. Oriana staying up top to maybe take some tower planes. But it looks like Cassante is going to go down bot lane, which isn't a bad idea to have him to have Cassante as a split pusher. Top lane always very valuable for split pushers for most of the top lane characters in general. I've never seen a Cassante split push, so I'm very curious to see. I tend to see like Yorick and um, Orn in particular. Well, York is the split push champion. Absolutely. The harvest is bountiful. <laughs> However, I do think this will be beneficial for the Cassante, solely for the fact that Cassante is really good at solo fighting. His whole kit revolves around taking somebody out of a team fight to solo fight them. So maybe just having him alone in that in general 
might benefit. It does look like Gwen's going to get up on Point Park's tower and take that tower up in the top lane. Now, MSU has two towers up on Point Park. We have yet to take one. I'm confident that we can get the turnaround. Oh, 100%. The gap is closing significantly now. Baron Nasher is now. alive right now, and the next Drake comes up in two minutes. Teams can probably start setting up for that, looking for the Baron. If MSU gets this Baron, they're going to take a lot more towers because they're really good at pushing up their lanes. They're really good at t making so much pressure on Point Park. They're good at putting down pressure, but we are, I believe, but I believe Point Park is equally as good at putting pressure on single target units. And that, I think, is to their advantage. Picking and choosing who to take down and then just spreading that one by one. Absolutely. Which if we can, if position. Point Park can get a pick on somebody who's out of place, that will be our benefit, especially if that someone is J4 or Kaisa. If they so much as slip up and we get the kill on them, that can get Point Park a lot of places. I think that just might... Oh. Oh. Charvin 4 waiting in the brush. Coming around the corner. Point Park's going to turn to try and engage on him. Alistar's going to push Zack into a wall to try and prevent that. It looks like both teams are narrowly escaping the team fight just by being too fast. This is probably benefit beneficial for, the, for both teams. Because now nobody dies. And yeah, nobody's no. losing out on that gold. An engagement that ends on a zero is still a zero. And that's more positive than a loss. The entirety of MSU in the mid lane now taking away that mid tower. Putting more pressure on the mid lane. Gives them less control of the rift in general. Now, Dragon is spawning in about 20 seconds. This is something that both teams really want. I know Point Park really wants the, those Dragon stacks. They really want that pressure. True. Although I do, I think they could also make the switch in the trade of giving uh, up, giving up the uh, giving up Drake to chase down Baron and trying to run back in terms of actual combat, giving up a bulkier minion wave in place of, you know, more bodies in front of them to prevent Jarvan or Gwen from taking down and making any select picks. Oh, one hundred percent. But. It seems like the game has ended. We did not get to see the end. Um, somebody probably left the lobby before the stream was able to finish. Very unfortunate. Unfortunate. However, uh, we still got one more. We got one more. Best we of do. three. It best is of best three. of three. We're going to see where that goes. We can run it back. Run it back. We're going to do great. We're going to do fantastic. Point Park stocks. It's be all way up. Okay. I don't know if they're way up. Eh, up enough. I, I actually don't know much about the stock market, to Neither be completely do honest. So, but... What it looks like happened there, it looks like MSU was winning the team fight down there. What they probably did, they probably took the Drake, probably took that Drake and rotated up towards Dragon while Point Park was still responding, taking that Baron and just pushed it down mid lane. Yeah, it's just how it goes. And, I mean, sure, the game ended a bit earlier than most games because it was, that, that was at, what, 20 minutes, give or take? Something like that. I don't even know but if that that just that means much. we can run it back even faster. I think now that Point Park has seen how MSU played, we can... Think a bit more about the picks and the bans that we did. Maybe focus the ban more on Jarvan 4. Maybe focus the ban more on Kaisa and Samira. We have our primary I think, I think we definitely targets. need to keep that Samira ban, especially given how we saw MSU play. If they got their hands on a Samira... A Samira with that Jarvan 4 would have been an absolute nightmare. Oh, 100%. But I think we we have the Point Park has their priority targets now. Jarvan for Gwen, I think, just because of how pushed up top lane was. I don't, I don't even know if it's Gwen. I think I think we can focus on top lane a bit, but maybe less on banning Gwen and more on finding a different pick for Ricky. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Now we just gotta wait for the next game. To happen, it is confirmed. Point Park did lose last round, which is really, really unfortunate for us. However, one more game. One A more shame, game. but the comeback's going to be glorious. Actually, I shouldn't say one more game. Two more games. Two possibly. more. Yes, possibly, two more. Maybe. Two more. It's possible. Who knows? We'll have. We'll just have to wait and see.
for the next pick and ban phase. Oh, I'm so excited! Can't oh, wait to see I some love, funny picks. I love pick and ban phase. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta subliminally insert our plans into their minds. Gangplank, so they... gamble, gangplank. <laughs> Come on, graves, twisted fate. Give me Bilgewater. They're my favorite region. <laughs> really? Absolutely, it's the funniest one. See, I feel basic. My favorite region's Ionia. Fair enough, fair enough. But specifically the whole magical part of it. I love the magical part. I love all the Vestayans. I love just the I, magic. I love the magic. I actually and think Targon. that's where Wood Kong comes from. Yeah. Is Ionia. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, we have all the Ionian chants. We have Yasuo. We have Yone. We have Irelia. We have Akali. But I... I am a sucker for magic. I don't care where it comes from. I love natural magic specifically, oh, which yeah. is why I'm drawn to Ionia, because a lot of Ionia's magic is in the nature. That, and Jin's Ionian. Mm -hmm. I love Jin. The number four is very natural in Ionia. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the most natural number in Ionia is ten. Because everybody knows when you're playing Yasuo, or Yone for that matter. Oh, yes. <laughs> the 10 kills power spike. Exactly. The 10 death power spike. Everybody loves the number 10. I sure do. I love dying 10 <laughs> times so that I can be really powerful. This is a lie. If only, if, if only that worked for Silas. <laughs> yep, we can hope. And now we're going to go to a break for a second. We will return shortly to see how game two of the of our first NACE season game goes. See y'all on the flip side.
All right. Welcome back. We've returned. Welcome back. Welcome back. Got myself a new Red Bull and everything because I drank the other one. Love Red Bull. Love it to death. Love it. Love Red Bull. It's, it's so tasty. It's like citrusy. Citrus on the sun. You'll love to see it. It kind of reminds me of like being like a kid in a way. Like in a really weird, weird way. Yeah, no, it's I hard to mean. explain. It gives me nostalgia. <clears throat> it's... Tastes like a pool in a good way. You know, we don't, we don't <laughs> go to a pool and it's just like, wow. And you have like a, well, like some like, uh, <laughs> all the pools I think of are just like school pools. So this is not apt. I've never been in a school pool. They're fine. There was one that was heated, which was really nice. The rest are frigid. We had one at our school and technically we were supposed to do swimming class, but we never did. So I don't know what school pool tastes like. If Red Bull tastes like school pool, I mean, hey, school pools must taste Good. Not that I would. I I don't recommend drinking the <laughs> water in any sort of school, but I do recommend drinking Red Bull. Red Bull, love it. Gives you wings. Anyways, we've returned. We're getting ready for. Oh shit! I'm falling. <laughs> I'm getting ready for. We're getting ready for game two right now. They're out there discussing their plans for their next play, for their next team. Almost walked into it, not allowed to see that. At least yeah, not we're, we're, yet. We've been banned. Not we've been banned yet. from leaving the room. We've we've been trapped here. We're actually locked in. Jarvin Ford's at the door. <laughs> he has swallowed the keys. He's not letting he us. He will out. not let us go get a preview. Protest, of the draft. protest, and Demasi right now. That means you guys get to see our wonderful faces and hear our wonderful voices mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. some more time. So that's really exciting, I think. I'm curious to see the new band picks, whatever they're choosing. I to would really down. like to see them not get Jarvin for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jarvin cleaned up. I'm very intrigued if Jarvin does get banned, what they're going to default to as the backup. Maybe something more common, like Kane or like Udir or something like that. Maybe an interesting more off pick. Or maybe someone who's more similar to Jarvin and someone more similar in play style to Jarvin. It looks like we're looking at the picks and the bands right now. It looks like um, Point Park has banned Samira again, as well as Poppy and Gwen. And MSU has banned Maokai, Lulu, and Jarvan 4. And uh, Silas, top lane. Interesting. Maybe, maybe they're going to probably, they might be like switching with the mid lane. It might be like he's picking it now to hold it in. But it looks like we're going to get the Malphite? Oh, and a moo -moo Are funny we gonna yordles. see Malphite? Nidalee! You know, I'm kind of hoping that maybe that Malphite might be going to Kakid in the jungle. Maybe, maybe crossing my fingers. Strangers in a strange land, excited to see Mal Malphite as one of the nastiest alts well, I've ever had to deal about with. Malkai, Kakid is fantastic on Malkai. He he's a beast. I've played against Kakid's Malphite, and let me tell you, it's not fun. Mm hmm. I, 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 it was a very upsetting experience. Um, it looks like the rest of the drought is going to be a surprise for us, which is kind of exciting, kind of seeing what we had at first. Looks like we had a Silas and an Italy for MSU, and we had, um, uh, what was it? It was Malphite and a Mumu for Point Park. Interesting choice. Interesting play. I've... In my experience, I've only fought Amumus. I've never fought alongside them. So really? I don't know what that tells about my and my friends' tastes in champions. However, Mumu, Amumu is a threat. And despite his lore, firmly find that he is alone. <laughs> That's so upsetting. I can't believe you'd say that about him. He's just a little guy. I mean, he's it... just a little guy. He probably deserved it. What I... if it's his birthday? Hey, Yordles you know, are it, mischievous it, ones. Is he my Yordle? I th I, he's like Corky. It's like, a cent yeah, basically. I, I thought he was like a child. I just thought he was like a baby. Given his size, maybe. Oh, it looks like we're going to be redoing the pick and the ban phase. A quick refresh. I heard that it was an issue. Somebody's client crashed. So we're back into it. It looks like we're going to be sticking to the same ban so far. Uh with MSU banning Malphite and Lulu and Point Park getting rid of Samira and Poppy. And just as a reminder, 
the sides are switched right now. We found out why they're switched. It's because Sin came in and flipped it. Yep, just ran in, we stank up the place. I almost it's died. It's awful. It's awful. It doesn't help that Jarvan Four locked us in the room. But mm -hmm, our mm -hmm. issue is that he did flip it. We caught him in the act, but we were not able to stop him. This and now it's kind of stuck like this. Punishment. So uh, just just bear with us. We blame Singed for this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cruel and unusual punishment in terms of on uh, Demacia's part, really. I'm astounded. At, no wonder Silas is protesting Demacia as a whole. <laughs> Singed isn't Demacian, though. Singed is from Zahn. True. Oh, Ooh, Olaf. Olaf instead. And Yasuo, interesting. Ooh, that's that's. Ooh, it looks like we're gonna be taking the Talia though. Talia, exciting. Getting exciting. highway on Talia. Love to see it. Love to see it. I'm excited to see who else we get because I feel like I feel like some of these things can go either way. I feel like we can see a Mumu in the jungle. We can see Malphite in the jungle, but we can also see a Mumu as a support. Let's, as a support. Let's see some Heimerdinger. I want to see him. You want to see Heimerdinger? Let me see the funny guys. I don't like Heimerdinger. I love him. I love him. He knows how to party. Love his little sentries, little little guys. He's an engineer. That means he solves problems. Practical problems. Anyway. He makes me upset. He makes me upset. Mm. I when I play Morgana, he just he sticks he sticks a turret in front of my Q. <laughs> he can do that. Yeah. If I sit, hit a Q at him and he places down a turret, my Q hits his turret and I can't do anything. Sounds it's okay funny. when I'm playing Lux because it just goes through. Mm -hmm, but I mm -hmm. prefer Morgana because her hits feel heavier and that makes me feel better about myself. And it looks like we're having another client crashing issue. So we're going to do a repeat of that once again. It looks like we're having an echo problem in the building Run too. It exactly. Echo's down are, there in the power. Why are all of the, the League of Legends champions messing with us today? We got Jarvan 4 locking us in the room, preventing us seeing the draft, Singe flipping our thing, and Echo rewinding time for the like fifth time. At least let me get a visit from like, I don't know, Kogma would be I funny. I want to see Viego. I love Viego. I would marry him. I feel like if Kogma were ever real, we just find him digging through people's trash. <laughs> Be yeah. funny. It's like in Ghostbusters when like Slimer came around like with the with the um the the ho the hotel car and was eating the toilet paper. <laughs> I remember that so well. That scene stuck in my little child brain for so long, and I, I was just like, yeah, that's the guy from Ghostbusters. He eats toilet paper. That's so funny. It's a class five I, I, boiling. <laughs> the ghostbuster gun <laughs> and the ghostbuster pack and everything oh it would be so cool to be ghostbusters i think i think maybe that's what i'll do for halloween maybe for halloween i'll come in here just as a ghostbuster so i can stop this league of legends champion problem from happening again oh that'd be nice honestly i'm just wondering client crash that could be that could be more than just echo it could be twisted fate could be graves they're stealing the bandwidth stealing the clients away <laughs> Gangplank just like leaving his barrel every which way. He's not a responsible man. He he lost a Lowie. Let's be real here. How do you fumble that? Right? He fumbles that. And then he just leaves his barrels everywhere, makes a mess, doesn't know how to clean up after himself. He's a pirate. Okay, but like Can you blame him? Some hide he eats oranges. He prevents scurvy. He Does likes he prevents scurvy. Doesn't mean he's clean. He's a bone carving enthusiast. He should be a clean Kill person people. despite the fact. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, misfortune <laughs> exists because he killed her parents. What murder? <laughs> you know what? I All think... I see is a man looking for romance that has a few hygiene problems, despite the contrary. <laughs> you know what else could be happening? Mm. What if? What if, what if, like, what if Zeri's just like having a little moment right now, and she's just like, oh yeah, forgetting everything? An identity crisis. I would she, say like an identity. Not in Valorant. Which tune in for our Valorant streams? We tune have in, tune in. We have a game tomorrow, a Valorant game tomorrow. That'll be really exciting. You guys should tune in if you like watching Valorant. I won't be casting, so you won't be able to see my face, and you won't be able to see Rhett's face. But you will see Ari's face. Ari's amazing face. Ari's amazing Ari faster. and Kai. And it looks like we're going to be back into the right. pick and the ban phase. It one, looks like four, we're going to be keeping one. the same champion, same fans. One, you know four, the one. deal. Same people. 
One. Let's One. help. One. Let's see maybe if we can get a bot pick and a support pick, and we'll see where we can go from there. Bands are the same. Come Bands on. Bands are the same. Bands are the same. Let's see something funny. I think it would be really mean if we didn't ban the same people. I think it'd be really funny if we could see some quirky mid. You want to see quirky mid? Oh, he's qu he's hilarious. Quirky's great. That is a pocket pick of Highways. Really? Yeah, of Ooh. course. Highway has a lot of interesting pocket picks. He was, at one point, a Twisted Fate one trick. Oh. Insane man. Fellow after my own heart, truly. He did make it to M7. Ooh. And then his Smurf account was going to... Not Smurf account, but like... He was going to have another account to try and like redo his ELO thing because his MMR was all messed up. Mm. It's, it has a Twisted Fate themed name. Uh, okay. I think Twisted Fate is my, I think my highest mastery champion. It's him, Ziggs, and Gangplank with, Ooh. I think, Mastery 4 with, with Twisted Fate. So Interesting. I'm climbing with those, but I'm always a little bit drawn between a bunch of different champs. Yeah, we'll never guess who, who my highest mastery is. Uh, Anivia? I sure can. Looks like. Point Park is going to be banning Diana and Rumble, and it looks like MSU is going to be banning Oriana and LeBlanc. Good choice. LeBlanc is slippery. That's interesting, given that we already picked our mid laner. Zeri Bot. Good to see. Her attack speed is vicious, as well as it's her electricity. It's really funny. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see who overshocks from MSU picks in the bot lane. Let's go. It's going to be Kaisa again. Why am I not surprised? Kaisa. I mean, in the last comp, though, Kaisa was not nearly the strongest of it the It was still really group. good. It looks like MSU is going to be taking not. our Nautilus. And we're going to be taking Jana. Jana. That's Jana. a good one. Oh, it's two people from Zon. Excellent. Excellent. That'll be so exciting. Oh, and it's like a little weather duo because it's the storm and the lightning. Oh, it's so fun. And we got two rock guys. Mm-hmm. And then mm -hmm. Abu, who's alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect two zonites two rock people and the guy who's cursed to be forever alone because he kills anybody he makes friends with little <laughs> swords keep falling on his head <laughs> it's your friend. he went to demacia i mean take a tour why not you know I wonder yeah, what the sites are we, in we, demacia. Estab we established that in demacia it rains swords mm-hmm mm-hmm Oh, let's let's think about these team comps though. We got yeah, the Nautilus no. with the Kaisa now. A lot of stun. A lot of stun. A lot, a lot of, of movement. And with Olaf, the the whole thing about being invulnerable just because of how angry you are. I think yeah. I think I a mean, really if you're, if you're, big if you're, if you're, thing. You're gonna make that guy mad, and he's gonna be invincible, and it's gonna be like that's gonna suck. So hopefully we can get ahead of Olaf before he hits level six and has the ability to not get stunned. I think a big threat is going to be uh, Silas. There's a 100%. very good group of alts on Point Park side, and one, one in my experience, one good Silas alt can devastate it's single so opponents. Awful. Another thing about playing Rakan, you ever get a Silas who takes your ult? I'm not familiar with Rakan's ult. You run in circles and you charm people. Ooh. I've if taken you, a if it's like, once. You, you go really fast, and like if you touch the enemy, it, it charms them. It's not uh, fun to be charmed while you're trying to charm other people. Mm -hmm. I've stolen a briar alt once. Funniest st stuff I've ever seen. Dude, you send off the briar alt, you know, go, you know, hits a guy. And then the briar has a charger, which kind of like pulls up her arms, you know, goes blah, 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 and then flies off. Z Silas! Silas, on the other hand, starts to run in the air like a cartoon character, you know, like, and then shoots off with no fanfare. It's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Like the Hotel Transylvania reference. This is what you get when you tune into a Point Park stream. You get really funny references. We're so funny. Watch us. But now seeing like Briar out shake alt is really funny. The one time I stole it. Just sending off a, a, a Silas on the opposite end of a lane. Just, <laughs> just strutting his stuff. And then getting surprising picks out of it. It's it's incredible how many people think it's an inting Silas. And then it explodes. And it is, it is delightful, absolutely. 
I like playing Nico when I'm when there's a Shaco on my team because then we'll all just run around. It'll be me, it'll be Shaco, it'll be Faco, it'll be my Nico clone who kind of looks like Faco. So there's four Shakos running around oh right now. Oh my goodness. It's Pandemonium. So it's so funny. You run out as Nico, send another Shaco out, and then the other Shaco comes out from the bush, and then Faco comes around the corner. Mm -hmm. It's insane. It's really, really funny. It reminds me of one of my favorite comps, unrelated, but it's a funny little story, uh, where my friends and I decide on a little guy's comp, funny little friends. So not all yordles. We weren't going to do that. We did anything that had a companion, a little thing you could spawn. So I believe my friends chose Heimerdinger, Ivern. I was a Lowy. I think my friend was Kled, because technically speaking, Scarl is a funny guy, funny little friend. And... I want to say. Uh, I can start naming people who have little friends. But please do. It's escaping me here. Zyra has a little friend. Annie has a little friend. Um, one of them was Zyra. I think the Kled one was wrong. I'm trying to remember who it could have been. I wouldn't really. Oh, Yorick has a little friend. Yorick. Yeah, it was, was Yorick. Right. Yorick top. All right, and soon enough, we'll be able to get into this game, see how the picks go, see how the teams clash against each other. It's It'll be crazy. really fun. It'll be really exciting. It'll be awesome and epic, and I think that I'm excited to see it. I think I'm I excited. think the I think the stun power Point Park has can beat out a lot of the movement. Oh, one hundred percent. Like with and with... depending on what kind. Oh, oh, AP Malphite. Ooh, AP Malphite. There it is. Let's go. I love AP Malphite, not against him, but I love seeing it when it's in our favor. Even more devastation with AP Malphite. That ult turns into a, a meteor of Malphite. a mountain. That guy is going to one-shot the Kai'Sa with AP Malphite. It's always so funny to see people get one-shot. <laughs> it's not fun being the guy who gets one-shot, though. Oh, certainly not, but it is hilarious. It looks like Nautilus is going to try and start the invade on Amumu, but Amumu and Talia aren't going to let that happen. Nautilus is going to walk back down, maybe go to bot lane. Janna's getting vision, I assume. Talia's preventing oh. Silas from getting anywhere near Mumu's jungle. Sorry, I got hiccups. Good move on the, on the Talia, though. Very good string. Seems like... Minion phase is about to start. The waves are like beginning to move. It looks like the entire meet. enemy team is now going to try and start an invade on the bot side instead of the top side. Interesting. I mean, usually how it goes, but I figured they I figured they would commit to top lane. It does look like they're going to be taking Point Park's blue buff at this point now. Mumu should either probably take their blue buff or go up towards red instead. Mm -hmm. They do get the buff off. Jaina hits a. Uh, Tornado, Nautilus hits a hook oh. on Zeri. Zeri Olaf has to flash that. away to escape, but Olaf trying to chase after, trying to get that kill. However, Zeri is just too fast for them. Mm -hmm. Olaf, though, is now much more dangerous in this point in time with that early level two. That's going to be That's a gonna threat, be at least until, like, level three. A small and, little spike. And Jan is going to be alone in lane until Zeri gets back, which is going to be very unfortunate. However, we just keep hitting those tornadoes. Mm -hmm. The more she hits those, minutes. the better her shield is going to be. Which means more sustain for us. Which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And even then, mm -hmm. it's poke potential. It does look like Nautilus is going to hex flash into that other bush to prevent Janna from knowing that he's in there, from preventing Point Park from knowing he's in there in general. Silas Ooh. is doing damage to that Malphite, but Malphite's the hitting the him trace. right back, doing just as much damage to each other. The biggest disadvantage in my experience with Silas is that you need to you need to go in. You need to step up, and if you miss your cooldowns, you miss your abilities, you don't get your empowered auto, which can be a detriment. Which is really interesting, given that top lanes usually place me more of a passive lane. Nautilus hits a hook on Zeri, does a lot of damage. Zeri is now half health, has to stay back under the tower, which maybe it's for the best. There's a wave under the tower she can get some autos off of. So Kiyasu is doing a lot of damage to Talia. Silas is going in on the Malphite, maybe playing too aggressive. Kaisa's taking some tower shots, getting half health herself. Probably going for that plating money, which, I mean, fair enough. Get some money early. Looks like Silas is going to recall, which gives uh, Ricky up top the chance to push that wave in. Maybe get some top pressure. 
get a, get ahead in CS because right now MSU is leading in CS in all waves. Not all waves, all lanes. It looks like a moon moves down bot jungle. If if Point Park lets MSU push up a little bit, that would be a, a great angle for a Mumu to come around a corner. Q in, get a stun off on either Kaisa. Oh, actually, preferably Kaisa, or maybe Nautilus if needed. Maybe get a kill. At least one. He's within the range. He's in his blue right now, which ideal ideal range if they if uh, Point Park lets MSU push up again. Yeah, but he can't. It would not be good for him to come down until they're pushed up. But it looks like he's going to, anyways, which might work out in our favor. Olaf is up on the top side, so there's not going to be any sort of counter gank. Um, Silas is going to be going in on the Malphite again. Malphite's going to be doing tons of damage. Um, who comes in, gets a stun off on the Nautilus. Ooh, Zeri ooh. coming in, doing autos, doing tons of damage. And first, first blood, blood goes to Janna. Excellent, excellent. Silas and Malphite trading off toe to toe. And but Silas, Silas gets does it. get the kill. Unfortunate, but it's not first blood. So Silas did not get that first blood gold, which is good for Point Park. Fantastic mm -hmm. for Point Park, even, I would say. Just as easily that Malphite can make people explode, so can Silas. It is nasty. And we can see up in the replay, we can see that kill that Amumu got on Nautilus. Fantastic kill. Perfectly played. Yasuo is engaging on Talia right now. Flash. I think that was a flash. No, just dashing a in. Stunning engage. But Amumu and Janna in. come around the corner, getting highway the kill on Excellent. the Yasuo. Excellent. And of course, Amumu having to take that. Uh, warranted jungle tax. And Zeri's doing a pretty good job of holding off Kaisa. Nautilus looks like he's coming around the corner, maybe trying to get a cleanup, maybe just defend mid lane while Yasuo is gone, while Yasuo is coming back in the lane. Now would be a great time for Highway to recall, maybe come back at the same time, or at least a similar time to Yasuo. Seems like the change in mobility is working to their advantage with, in terms of the junglers, with Amumu being able to cross over walls with his Q. And his other abilities, oh, much greater than Olaf can, which is sprinting. And Jan is clearing up the wards towards the Dragon Pit, which is good for us. Silas is going in on Malphite again and gets Ooh. a second kill. <laughs> Looks like Jan is going to get a second kill. Jan is now 2-0. and oh. Ooh. Nautilus does grab her with the hook, though. Olaf's doing tons of damage, but the tornado from behind stopping Nautilus in his tracks. That was scary close, goodness. Yasuo is going to be engaging on Talia, but it looks like Talia has enough to stay and to not really take any damage at all from Yasuo. They both have very um, environmentally changing abilities. Yasuo's Windwall and Nila's Rock uh, Wave. Can't really hide from that. It looks like MSU is going to be trying to take the first dragon. It is Chemtech Drake. A little bit of life. I wouldn't say it's the end of the world if Point Park doesn't get this, although it can be dangerous once it Olaf would, gets bigger. Yeah, it would be more beneficial to Point Park to be able to get early drags and be able to stack those drags. However, they still have a chance to get this, especially now that Rift Herald is spawning in about a minute. Um, mm -hmm. Point Park can maybe try and focus on that. And it looks like while they were taking the dragon, Point Park is actually taking some of Olaf's camps in their topside jungle. Ideal to starve an Olaf rather than to fight him head on. That's true. Now, yeah, let's see. Okay. Malphite's pretty pushed up on the Silas. Silas is going in, doing tons Oof. of damage to that Malphite. Nasty, but it nasty. seems like Malphite's able to escape. Kaisa's not in her lane. Is losing out on CS. She is ahead of Zeri at the moment. But that can't, will that prove to be detrimental? Will that prove to work out in her favor? Who knows? Only time will tell. I'd very much stay, given that she has call. That's an ideal thing to keep in lane until it's finished. That is very true. I've seen a lot of people going call lately. I've gone it a few times myself, although I don't Same. tend to see what's so great about it once. Money. It's... I suppose so. Yeah, loads of money. I love money. It looks like Nautilus is going to be coming back down in the lane from around the corner. Probably going to try and stop that Zeri's back. Janna's pushing up pretty far. Olaf is using this moment to take Rift Herald. Yeah, it'd be a good time to attack Shelly. It would be. But it doesn't, Point Park is not in a position to do anything about that right now. We're 
our jungler is on the bot side of the map, which isn't bad. Right now, at this moment, we can probably try and pull off a gank on bot lane if we can push them up far enough. Uh, MSU does get the Herald. It does look like they're going to be rotating towards mid lane, maybe. Maybe try and put that in the mid lane, get those towers. Amumu's right around the corner. Watch as Nautilus goes up. It looks like they're preparing for a gank. Maybe preparing for a gank. No, not really. Olaf certainly could. He's got the resources it's at this point to try. See, for Amumu, this would be a gr I feel... Well, not right now. We're kind of pushed into the jungle a little bit. But earlier, it was a pretty good angle for a gank as MSU was pushed up. However, they kind of went back a little bit. Let's see. MSU pushed up to their towers. See, I think the team we got right now is really good for poke, and it looks like maybe that's probably going to be try and be our win condition instead of trying to fight, 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 maybe more just, like, poke people out. Poke them out, get them really low on health, see where you can go from there. Someone will get impatient eventually, and that someone might be Olaf. Yeah, he seems a little bit bloodthirsty. Or Silas. Silas seems really bloodthirsty. He yes. really, like, going in there, doing tons of damage. Looks like he also came down the gank in the bot lane, but... Talia's going to teleport down to try and assist with that. He oh. also does hit a win, a tornado on the Gianna. Ult her. Yasuo is now down on his ult. Amumu coming down. Amumu dealing tons of damage. Ults on the Kai'Sa gets stunned on the Kai'Sa. He is ignited, but he manages. Oh. He almost manages to escape. Routes gets the kill on the Yasuo, but they did get the kill on our Amumu, on Kakid. Unfortunate. Olaf rushing in. Although, maybe just there to pick up some CS and sort of push up the wave a little bit, help them crash in. Scores are pretty tied right now. We're 4-4. Four to four. Malphite and Silas going at it in the lane. Silas, ult, Malphite ults on him, but Olaf is placing that Rift Herald down bot. Mm -hmm. well, now the score is 5-4. to four. Uh, In gold, we're only 2... Point Park is only 2k away from um, MSU in terms of gold. Not a terrible difference, however. No, but not an good. ideal one. Mm -hmm. It's like Amumu clears up that wave up towards top to take away some of the pressure so Silas doesn't get as many plates as Silas recalls. So Jen is going to be setting up vision up more towards drag. Maybe they're going to start rotating up towards that, given that there's only 50 seconds until the next Drake spawns. Yeah, another minute, and we'll see a much, uh, much bigger team fight here. I wonder who would try... I imagine the Amumu would have to act soon, if not this set of objectives now, uh, given how Shelly and the last Drake uh, turned out. It's like Nautilus ca catches Janna off guard in our own jungle, knocks Ooh, her up so Yasuo can goodness. get the ult off. Talia comes down to help out, knocks the Nautilus away. So Yasuo comes up under the tower. Janna gets to knock up on the, there we the go. Yasuo, and Highway gets the kill. Excellent, Amumu comes excellent. down to try and help. Whew. Olaf is just CC immune, doing tons of damage and taking very little. Talia but takes Highway it, gets another kill. That leaves him at 3-0 and on Talia. Very good to get that Talia fed, getting uh, getting Talia bulked up closer to their items. It looks like Nautilus is going to escape with just a sliver of health left. Very unfortunate for Point Park, but very, very good for MSU, as it's another kill that Point Park does not have. Talia built Leandre's... I I was not too familiar with Tilia's kit. Oh, uh, ooh. we have a. It small looks pause. like we're gonna have a little bit of a pause, which is completely fine and okay. Um, they're probably gonna discuss a few things, see how things are going. Probably, perhaps some so technical difficulties. So why don't we discuss a few things and see how things are going? Very, very exciting to see the sort of back and forth between the mid lane engagements. Mm -hmm. Talia doing an astounding job at pinning down and finishing off targets, the Olaf, the Yasuo, and so But even on. just like playing safe, it seems like the strategy right now is to play a bit more safe in terms of the lane, especially mid lane. Just play safe, wait till someone comes up for the gank and then get the kill when the Yasuo is overextending, getting too greedy. When the Olaf is overextending, getting too greedy, Talia gets the final hit, gets fed. That's really good for us. Impatience will be the biggest uh, weakness to exploit at this point. Absolutely. Top lane is a little rough, just given how much Silas has been moving and dealing with uh, with Malphite. If we if Malphite can start playing a little bit safer, maybe playing under the tower, waiting for Silas to get impatient, waiting for Silas to get bored to come back in, maybe get the kill on the Silas and a shutdown. 
and mm -hmm. less kills towards Silas. And we're, we're back. back. Let's go. Looks like not much has changed since we last tuned in. Uh, MSU still leading in gold, but we're still tied in terms of kills. Botwave pushed up in favor of Point Park, but mid and top are pushed up in favor of MSU. Yasuo hits Yasuo a tornado, gets an in. alt on Talia. Talia appears to have made it uh, by, though, just narrowly, just narrowly. Just narrowly escaping. Let's see, Silas and Malphite back at, again, waiting for Silas to get impatient using his cooldown, uh, his cooldown passive, letting his empowered uh, autos finish up. <laughs> Janna placing a shield on the tower to stop Yasuo from doing as much damage. Never knew you could do that. That's insane. Wait, actually? I, I'm very unfamiliar with some champ's uh, side abilities. <laughs> it looks like Nautilus hits a Q on the Amumu, but Amumu ults to stop Olaf and Nautilus in their tracks. Aut Nautilus gets the ult off on Amumu, and Kaisa stakes the kill with her W. Swipes in. Talia is going head-to-head -head with Yasuo in the, in the mid lane. Janna and Nautilus are kind of looking at each other funny right now as Olaf takes Amumu's camps. Olaf's constantly invading. My goodness. He's probably just a little bit mad that uh, Amumu took some of his camps early. Mm. Um, and it looks like MSU is going to start taking the second drag. Cloudrake is now defeated, and let's see what soul it's going to be. What mm -hmm. soul? What soul? What soul? Let's see. Hextech Drake. Ooh, the hex t the hex gates are always fun to uh, mess around with. See, I tend to not use them as much as I feel like I should. The ones I always end up using either get me too far or ten feet away. So. Yep, that's that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at with it. Which it probably doesn't help that I play squishy champions. For me, it's just the fact of would you like to leave base? Okay, you can be put in the jungle, one foot away. Yeah, I mean it is really good around the dragon pit. Oh, for but sure, for sure. I think this will be really beneficial for Point Park and for MSU with how much like mobility both teams have. We got Shelly back for one more Herald. That could be a big game changer for Point Park if they can snag it. Drop it down on a particularly important or resilient lane, maybe top lane or mid lane in particular. I think our best bets would either put that in the mid lane or the bot lane just because of how much pressure there is in the top lane, and we seem to be able to hold up pressure in both mid and bot. Nautilus hits a hook on Janna. Yasuo tries to go over, hits a, a good knock up on Janna. Yasuo tries to ult in, but Janna has ult up and ready and knocks him away. Yeah, you can't do much when you're hurled under it a Looks turret. like Point Park does get the kill on the Nautilus also. Um, Silas scared. and Olaf come in, try and do some damage. They do get the kill on Highway. However, Ralts on Zeri. Ends up with a double kill and is now 3-0. and oh. Excellent. Excellent play. Excellent play. Back and forth, and they're going to go in on Shelly. There we go. Which is a fantastic play. Scores are now more even up. There's a 4K, about a 4K gold difference. Still in MSU's f favor. MSU is up in drags. However, if we can get this Rift Herald, maybe we can be up in towers. And that is an objective bounty on Point Park's side. I still think Point Park has a pretty good advantage in terms of the team fight. Bot Kaisa the ults on the in on the Zeri, trying desperately to get that kill, but Amumu gets the kill on the Zer on on the Kaisa. Yasuo follows in, tries desperately to clean up something. He's really However, Talia and Janna are there to try and help, and the kill Ooh. goes to... Let's see who it went to. Janna. Uh, yeah, Janna. Janna gets the kill on the Yasuo. Goodness, good for the Janna, good for the Janna. Silas and Malphite still staying in their little top lane tower as Rift Herald gets placed in the mid lane. Here we go, can't do much once this thing charges. They will get the objective gold off this tower. And maybe Shelly gets off one more charge if Olaf and Nautilus, oh, nope, Nautilus just smacks oh, him in the back. That's insane, I've never seen that him hit that hard. To be fair, it does look like he has, what does he have? Let's see what Nautilus' items are. Once our socials link out of the way, follow our socials. Oh, yeah. Oh, he has. Okay, I don't know why he's doing that much damage. <laughs> it and does look like he is building towards um, Radiant Virtue, which is a fantastic item on Nautilus. It gives his whole team health whenever he ults. Ralts gets the kill on Nautilus. 
runs in, and Highway gets a kill and a shutdown on Olaf. Very good, very good. See, it seems very much so that MSU's folly here is going to be their impatience. They were just underneath mid tower two for a, an uncomfortably long time. That leaves Highway on Talia at five and one, Ralts on Zeri at four and oh, and our Janna, Jackie on Janna, is three and two. All right, it looks like we're going to be pushing up the mid lane. It looks like. Uh, Ricky Bobby on Malphite is rotated towards bot lane, trying to defend that tower a bit more. Yeah, so and Talia staying stuck in their lanes this time, which is surprising because last game both mid laners ended up in a different lane. Mm -hmm. oh, it looks a skirmish like in the river. Not quite a skirmish yet. It looks like more setting up vision, setting up pressure, setting up maybe getting a pick to try and fight that dragon. Still, though, I have the storm. Everything's calm now, but a fight is sure to break out here in any moment. Silas going in. Going in on the Janna, doing tons of damage. Nautilus goes in, gets an ult. Amumu also ults. Talia getting off tons of damage, and Kakid gets a kill on Cuddly Dragon on Nautilus. Amumu taking out the Nod. That's Silas good takes pick. out Amumu, but it looks like the rest of Point Park is there to follow up and scare MSU away from the Dragon and hopefully be securing our first drag. We're going to pull it out. Point Park's going to pull it out of the pit. Deal tons of damp. Pulling it all the way. Oh, no. It's going back. It's going back. Oh, let him say hi to Lord Gromp the fourth. <laughs> MSU is going to come up. Scare, a, scare Point Park away from the dragon. Take the vision off of the dragon. But we're going to chase them and scare them away with our tons of poke. Tons of poke damage. Uh, Kai's abilities uh, going down the river. Let me see it. <laughs> Let's see, are they going to pull him out or are they going to pull him out to a new home? No, nope, just, uh, just Pulling him out end. is a great idea because MSU might come behind the pit and try and scare them off. Janna hits a tornado on Yasuo. Talia's going to wall off the rest of the team. Silas My dashes goodness. back over just for Malphite to come in. Jump on him. Point Park gets the very first Hextech Drake of the game. All righty. Highway gets a kill on the Yasuo. We're ch they're chasing us while they're that low on health. Janna doing tons of damage, however, it does look like MSU is going to make it out of here with a double kill for the Olaf as well, and Silas is going to ace. Unfortunate, unfortunate with the team fight, but we, but PP, uh, Point Park did come out with the, their first Drake, which is a very good boost to the, the match in general. An incredible team fight. Hopefully the next Drake, they can turn that around. Although it looks like they're tearing down the towers here. Top one got, is destroyed. Yeah, that's tier one top, and it looks like they're going to get tier two bot. Not the it end looks like the they're world, taking but... tier two mid lane also. Just Ooh. having somebody in all of those lanes to deal tons of damage to those towers, take them out, is crazy. Yeah, I, think the, I think the next big step is going to be nailing that Silas. He has a 700 gold bounty going 6-0. If someone can uh, get that cash, it'll be a huge boost. Maybe, hopefully, the Malphite or the Amumu. Or maybe even the Zeri or the uh, Talia. It, the rich get richer. <laughs> it's... I'm not going to say that. Um, it looks like Zeri and Jan are going to be rotating up towards the Baron Pit. Maybe get a bit of vision. Silas is going to be going through the Hex Gate into Point Park's jungle near Malphite. It's like a little skirmish is happening up towards the Baron Pit as both teams try and get vision on the objective. Janna running interfering, just trying to keep MSU away from it. Silas going back in on Malphite. Malphite desperately trying to run away, desperately trying to get that Silas hopefully under tower. And uses his ult to get away, which was not a bad play. I think that was a good call. Good escape. Good escape tool, yeah. Going in on Baron. Ooh, a fight might break out right in the Baron pit. I think, I, th I think that was more MSU baiting Baron. He also throws out a tornado, but the luckily manages not to hit anyone. Silas takes Zeri's ult. Zeri runs in. Silas gets an ult off. Silas. Not Yasuo gets an ult off on Point Park. Ooh. And MSU gets a second ace. And it looks like with that ace, instead of going the Baron, they're just going to run it up mid. They're just going to take those towers. Looks like they are going for end, and a good opportunity to as well. 
with the with the entire team down, the first person back going to be Janna. There's very little point Park could do realistically to and with how much back. damage they do to the towers, most of the people pushing right now are melee champions, and melee champions do more damage to towers. Janna oh. comes in, tries to shield the tower. Janna and Zeri's back now, who can clear up the wave pretty quickly and keep anyone at bay. Talia sweeping, sweeping. in with a metal chair. <laughs> and it looks like Point Park does get a shutdown on the Kaisa, and somebody forgot to stay in the lobby again. But you know what? A shame, That's a shame. fine. What probably happened, perhaps minions, I think, might have been the, the one to do it in. That's usually like, how that ends up. Yeah. Too many minions. I'm not going to lie. I thought you meant you were blaming the minions for somebody leaving the lobby. And then oh, I was no. about to ask if you meant like League of Legends minions or like Despicable Me minions. No. However, no. it does look like Point Park might have fallen, might have not. We'll see how the results turn out. I'm hoping that we didn't fall. Hopefully However, not. looking at the way that the game was, it's safe to assume that Point Park may or may not have lost. Oh, oh no. no. We get to see the last part of the game. Let's go, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. All right, Olaf slaying Gr Lord Gronkulus the fourth. Is that, we're just going to call him now. Is that gonna, we're do, are we always going to refer to Gromp by its full name? Well, I'm going to try and memorize all of Ivern's lines for this because I pretty funny. I mean, we're taking out the wolves. Neck and neck jungle clearing. Also in the river, cleaning taking... up the vision. It does look like at some point, Point Park ended up with Baron, Very which good. is really awesome and cool, if I do say so myself. Looking at the map again, yep, it does appear that we... MSU is in Point Park's jungle. Yep. It does appear, though, that Point Park's mid lane is cleaned up mostly, and the two primary uh, towers in front of the Nexus are clear. However, they're pulling strong with that Baron buff. Hopefully they can just hold out, make sure mid turret, not mid turret, mid inhibitor comes back. Just play safe, try not to die. Baron is an incredible defensive tool. That is very true. It looks like Silas comes in and takes Malphite's ult. Could be dangerous, Ooh. could be Ooh. reckless. Oh, si the issue with Silas is he does so much damage and Malphite doesn't have, despite being a tank, can't stand up to it. Looks like a little bit of a skirmish is going down towards the dragon pit. MSU takes their third dragon. Amumu comes soul. in, ult. Skyloft on Yasuo gets the kill on Kakid. The best thing that Point Park can do right now is recall and defend that base because MSU is going to come up right through the middle and right to that nexus. They got to make sure they're going to be able to be there to defend that. Oh, Kaisa, Kaisa comes in, in ult with the on Yasuo. the fight. It gets the kill. Nautilus is auto-attacking Zeri, and Zeri gets the kill on the Nautilus. Kaisa's chasing Talia back all the way towards the land, and Ooh. Kaisa ends out with a double kill. And Silas aces the team. Point Park falls to MSU. Closer, Matt. Closer round this time. Closer. It round. was definitely a closer round. This much time. better the, than the first time with the ex exploding impatience, but. Perhaps scaling was what kind of did them in, especially with the Kaisa and the Silas. Oh, well. absolutely, with the Kaisa and the Silas. But that's only our first game of the season. Many, there, many more. There's going to be so many more that come and so many more we can learn from. We did really, really well this game, I think. We might not have won, but we can definitely see how much our guys have grown as a team and how they have started working together. And we got to see Ricky play his first ever game with and the team. An astounding game. Great to see him. Hope to see him do any many more great plays this season. 100%. All right. Well, I hope to see everybody who tuned in for the next game. Um, tomorrow is our Valorant game. Starts at 7, I believe. And on Thursday, we're going to be having another League of Legends game with some new casters that I'm really excited for you guys to meet. And I'm Gail. I'm Rhett. And we'll see you on the flip side.